ago, actually not him, but just the situation that he is in, and a lot of elephants of mature stature, they find themselves chained to little objects to hold them in place with no fight, with no resistance, because in an earlier stage, they were trained to accept defeat. They were trained to accept <coughs> things just the way they were. <laughs> and we watched a little video the last time, and it was dealing with learned helplessness. And as, adult, as people, sometimes we can learn to just accept things the way they are a way they assume appear to be. But we don't realize that because we're in Christ, we, we increase the level of strength and authority that we walk in, and we, didn't, we don't have to, if you would, surrender to a little small stake that has no authority over my life whatsoever. And a lot of times... It could be, I'm not going to say simple things. I'm, I'm just going to just say for me, when I start exploring the, some of those stakes that was in my life, a lot of them led right back to my childhood. <laughs> you know, we talk about, I said, Kendrick, where did this begin? And I would see myself standing in my parents' front yard, and the Lord's like, oh, well, we're going to fix this little thing. I'm going to show you that you have the ability to uproot those things that's been holding you back. Or holding you hostage. Okay? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Easy button now. You're pushing everybody applause. No. And so a few weeks ago, we started talking. We just used this term, and this term, it, it wasn't originated from me. It was actually originated from one of the members here, and we were just talking about what if. And, it's, and she said, I would just go through my day just saying what if. What if I didn't fear? Man, if I didn't walk in fear, then I, what would I not do? Then I was like, wow, that is awesome. And then one thing led to another, and I started talking to me. I said, we need to get some armbands. And I just said, what if? Then I'm like, what if we were free? What if I, you, we were free from those little irritants or traps that's tried to hold us down? And we've made decisions based off of what appeared to have authority in my life. Okay, <laughs> it's appeared. <laughs> I made many decisions based off what something just appeared to have authority in my life. It didn't. But somewhere I gained the trust <laughs> that that thing can hold me. I learned helplessness, if you would. I learned how to surrender to something that was inferior. Because all my life I was told I had to do so. It's kind of the way it is with these giant creatures of God. This little boy, he walked into a zoo or circus, whatever. He walked into this circus, a zoo, one of them. And he sees this huge elephant chained to something very similar to that and had this little bitty fence around him. And, and he asked the, the innkeeper, or the innkeeper, the zookeeper, said, why is this guy, why is he not running away? Obviously, he, that couldn't hold him. And he told him, say, well, it started 20 years ago. When he come in as a little, little tyke, they chained him to something that could hold him down. He, he would break or he would try to break loose and get away and all that, but they constantly helped him, they restricted him from 
getting away. And, and over the years, he just learned, oh, this is my lot in life. <laughs> whoa, whoa, what little lies the enemy tell us. <laughs> we want to expose some of those. And we've been doing that, I believe, over the past few weeks. And the first time we talked about what if, what if I, was fr- uh, what if I was, didn't walk in fear, okay? If I didn't walk in fear, what I love would unconditionally, would I, you know, just live life to the glory and honor of the Lord for the things he's called me to. And, and then the other day we talked about what if I was free. Jesus said it like this. Say you will know truth, and truth will make you free. You will know. You will learn. If you look at that in the Greek, it means you will learn to know. There's truth coming. Truth is presented. And if you, and if you study, if you look at it, you, you receive it, you will learn to know that this is truth, and it be, will be the catalyst of catapulting me into a place of freedom. And then he goes on, he said, and if the sun shall make you free, you're free indeed. And that word freedom means, I love it, it means unrestrained. To go to with pleasure. I love it. He said, if, if the sun shall make you free, there's the ability in life to go at it with pleasure. Unrestrained. I like that. I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Man, I, I just hope y'all just enter into this place with me today. I'm telling you, because Jesus is relaxed right now. I mean, I'm telling you, he is like, there's no stress here. Because <laughs> I got this. <laughs> and that's what I'm learning. He's got this, okay? But that word free, it does. It means to liberate. I like this one. To exempt from moral, ceremonial, or mortal liabilities. A lot of times... And I, and I like the word ceremonial because a lot of times if I choose to gain trust in something that has no authority in my life, no ability in my life to hold me captive, and I begin to believe that that thing controls my life, I will begin to set up or even make decisions in my life based on a lie. Can you hear me? Because Jesus said, you will know truth. The truth will make me free. So if I am held bound by something, if I'm in bondage, if I'm enslaved to something, then somewhere along the line, I have come into agreement with a lie. And he's saying, but truth is going to be the thing that set me free here. But many times, because of that lie, I will begin to, like I said earlier, make decisions based off of it. Um, I'm going to say it like he said it over here, where he says, you shall be free, exempt from ceremonial liabilities. I'll begin to set up my own ceremonies within myself within my spirit in other words it looks like this because i am bound by a certain thing let's just say rejection can we use rejection for a moment if i am enslaved to performance because i want others to accept me my life will be framed with trying to do things for others to accept me. In other words, I'll begin to perform ceremonies in my own life. I'm, I'm, I'm making an offering unto the opinions of others. <laughs> I'm burning incense unto the thoughts and ideas what others may think about me. And he said, but Jesus said, I'm making you, I, I'm exempting you from the ceremonial liabilities of trying to please man. He said, and there's, he said, and when you come to know this truth that I have for you, those ceremonies will cease to exist in your life. 
You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And whom the Son of Man set free is free indeed. You're exempt from performing or burning incense or burnt offerings until the opinions, ideas, or even the cares of what others may think about you. Therefore, you can enter into life with pleasure and not as a slave, but as a citizen with the right to enjoy the life that God has given you and not be shackled to the desires, opinions, or even that which may appear to be righteous in the eyes of others. See, he's come to set us free. And see, what some of these guys didn't understand or recognize back in, in Jesus' day, they always, they were thinking he was coming to set them free from the tyranny of the Roman government. You know, he's going to ride in on this great stallion. You know, he's going to pull out his sword. A few heads going to roll. You know the deal. And then, la, la, we're in charge. <laughs> but Jesus is like, well, no. I come to set you free on a greater level. I come to set you free at a point where even if you're in prison, you're free. I mean, because seriously, the reality of it is I could be shackled to a stake outside and be free. <laughs> there, no, there's a song that, why does the cage bird sing? <laughs> he, he sings because he's happy. I sing because I'm free. <laughs> Please don't, don't, don't force me to sing. Um, we, had a, we had fun with that last night, right? I tried to sing a song when he tried to lead, and I started singing, and I looked at her, and I told her after, I said, don't ever let me do that again. <laughs> don't stop me. Turn my mic off, unplug it, do whatever's necessary. Don't let that happen again. Um, <laughs> but, but sometimes this is what it looks like. A ceremony in my soul, okay? Sometimes I will dress a certain way for others to accept me. Sometimes I would drive certain cars for others to accept me. Sometimes I would eat at certain restaurants for the approval of others. Get it. None of that is bad. You can eat at the finest restaurant. You can drive the fanciest car. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Matter of fact, pick me up and I'll ride with you. That's not the point. The point is, why am I laboring to do it? Am I laboring to do it because if I get the right hat, the right shoes, the right horse, will I fit in a certain club? If that is the case, that's called slavery. It's bondage. And Jesus said, I have come to set you free from ceremonial activities. Okay? And that comes from the fear of rejection, bound by the fear of performance. It gets, it gets better. Some of us don't deal with the opposite sex well because of abusers. Some of us don't, some, some guys don't treat ladies in a manner that they should treat them because somewhere along the line, perhaps, maybe they were abused. And they still approach women with the view of their abuser. Vice versa, some young ladies don't deal with men well because of the abuser. And so when they approach, they still see that person or that sex as the abuser. And Jesus is like, but I come that you may be freed from that bondage. I release you. He releases us from being shackled to someone else's sin. He releases us from not having to carry around someone else's baggage. See, because many of us, we were the victims of, others, of someone else's sin. Many of us. But he said, you know what? I come set you free. Is that okay? Is that okay? So if I'm able, and he's doing this, you know, he's making us free from our stuff. 
so that we can enjoy the life that he gives us. He's doing this so we can operate as citizens of the kingdom of God and not slaves. Peering out the windows of life, making accusations towards someone else because they're enjoying their life. I'm not coming out because it's scary out there. So I look through my window and I'll see Paige enjoying her life. And I'll say stuff like if she really knew what was happening, she would come in here and be safe with me. Because there's a bunch of crooks out there, Paige. After all, everybody's out to get us. <laughs> it happens. Because I'm in prison. And a lot of times, it's self-imprisonment, me. I choose a window to look through at life. I asked this question last week. Are we content with having an idea of freedom or are we passionate about being free? If I am content with just having an idea of freedom, then it will only become a fantasy. I have an idea that it's possible to be free, but yet these things are running around in me. You know, it's like Paul said, you know, every time I wanted to do good, <laughs> sin just jumps all over me and I don't know what to do with myself. I can't help myself. But if I'm passionate about being free, I'll begin to partner with the Lord and say, okay, Jesus, here I am. Here I am. I want you to take this. Here's my stuff. I'm pushing your easy button. And I want to watch you wipe the slate clean. And we're going to start over. That's what happened a couple of weeks ago. So if you want to hear the rest of that, get the tape. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's true. I want to, we're going to read something here in Galatians. We read this last week. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. And it says this. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And that phrase, I like those words there, stand fast. It, it, is, it is really neat. It's the word stako in the in the in the Greek, and it means to stationary, that is, to preserve, to stand fast, abide, appoint, continue, covenant, establish. In other words, Kedrick, there comes a time when you have to fight for your freedom. In other words, we're not just going to let things come in and take the freedom or convince me that I don't have it just because of circumstances that is going on around me. He says, stand firm in this freedom that Christ has given you. Okay? And I read that last week, and I'm like, man, that is some awesome stuff. I like that. But then I read it in another translation. It was uh, the God, God's Word translation, and I, and I liked it at this point more better. And I'm sure I read another translation, I like it even more better. But check this out. Yeah, more better. I'm not from Louisiana. It says, Christ has freed us so that we may enjoy the benefits of freedom. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Oh, did I say I like it? I like it. He freed me for a purpose. There's one translation that said, it is for freedom that he set me free. He went to the cross so you and I does not have to look at freedom as a great idea, but it's actually reality. Okay. It is for freedom that he set me free. He said, and since he set me free, he said, and this is why he did it, that we may enjoy, get this, the benefits or the advantages that freedom brings. See, freedom brings me the ability to enjoy life. I don't know where you are and in that level or that arena of life, whether you're enjoying it or not. I hope you are because if, if you're not, then let's push the easy button. 
I had someone tell me last night, and we were getting ready, we were setting up the worship team and everything, we were ready to go, and, and uh, some of you guys know David Hoskins, you know, and he come up to me, and he gave me a big hug, he said, Kedrick, he said, y'all having fun yet? He said, because if you're not, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> so if you're not having fun yet, you're doing it wrong. There's something needs to shift if I'm not enjoying this life that God has given me. He said, Christ came. He went to the cross. He did all of his business, blood shed, and, and heavens went black, and rocks written. All of that stuff happened so you and I can enjoy the benefits of freedom. <laughs> I like it already. We can stop right there and eat and go home, okay? But we won't since I have at least another minute or so. <laughs> he did this so you and I can enjoy benefits of freedom. So I want to real quick look at um, some of the benefits of freedom, some of the advantages, or let's just say it this way, why is it important for you and I to be free? Can we say it that way? Why is it so important for you and I not just, no, not just to have an idea that is there and it's available for me, but so that you and I can reach out and grab a hold of this gift that God has given us. Man, there are some advantages in having that revelation. Okay? So, the first one that I want to look at is one of the reasons it is important for us to know that we are free or we have the ability, it's there, it's available, and we are if we receive it, is because we represent God when we do. I said represent at first, but I like to break it down as represent, okay? You know, because, because there, there's a lot of people, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say represent, represent him to the world that we live in. Because God is, he, he's everywhere, he's showing up, he's making himself known, but a lot of times because of bondages and shackles and that little stake that's holding us back that has no business doing it, we lose sight. We lose focus. The whole world has lost the idea that God even exists and we choose another option. But what God is saying, I'm setting you free so you can represent me. Re, do it over again. In your life, show that I am God. See, that's where it gets scary because we're like, he's going to use me to present him in the earth? I, I, yeah. I know it's crazy, right? That's a miracle in itself that he would use me to show his goodness in the earth. This is, this is awesome stuff. Then the king, Nebuchadnezzar, was astonished, and he arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king, look. He answered, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And when I read that, I'm like, okay, now here you had this king. He was set on his gods. He was set on doing things his way, and, and, he, and he was intent on it having that way to the point that I'm going to kill anyone who don't bow to my wishes. In other words, you are enslaved to my opinions, my ideas. But when these guys are like, you know what? I am free in who I am. I may have been, if you would, kidnapped from my homeland, but I am not hurt in my spirit. So therefore, I know who God is, and, and because I know who he is, listen to me, O king, it will be known to you if God, even if he don't save us from this, even though we know he can, you let it be known who's God. And because they were free enough to walk under the ideas, the authority, and the opinions of their God, they chose not to bow. Now, here's the deal. If I choose to walk under the identity of something else, I'm subject to start taking on those ways, those ideas, those thoughts, 
those mannerisms. But if I choose to know, say, okay, God, my identity is in you. It's not in the world around me. It's not in the circumstances around me. Lord, I am free from the opinions, images of man. So whatever happened, let it happen. But I'm going to give you honor and I'm going to give you glory. And because of that type of freedom, look what happened. They went in with confidence. If he deliver us, we know he can. But even if he don't, we honor him. And it be known to you, O king, that he is God. And this is what happened. The king, he said he was astonished. He said, uh-oh. Um, three went in and they were bound. But I see four that are loose. And one of them carried the appearance of the Son of God. The reason I, I read that is because a lot of times when we choose, recognize and choose the freedom that the Lord has given us, that I walk in, that I do not have to be shackled, and my opinions does not have to be made by things around me, but I simply walk in the confidence of my God. People around me, around you, will begin to notice that the God you serve is real. That the God you serve will come through for you. We say